Okay, so first let's take a look at some hyaline cartilage and we're going to look first at hyaline cartilage in the trachea. In fact, this is a slide you may have looked at uh, before. To get to this slide, go to the search slides box, type trachea, T-R-A-C-H-E-A, -E and select the second slide which appears in the uh, NYU virtual microscope. And this is the uh, slide as it appears here. The trachea is the windpipe. This surface here is the surface along which uh, air passes and as you now know this is lined by respiratory epithelium which we'll get to see in a moment. The hyaline cartilage is this material we see here and here and the function of the hyaline cartilage in the trachea is to maintain the trachea in an open position so it acts as a structural reinforcement uh, so that the trachea stays open and doesn't collapse on itself. Let's uh, zoom in in magnification a little bit. Uh, here again is the epithelial surface which is lined with respiratory epithelium even at this magnification we can see the cilia on the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelial cells and we can see goblet cells, these uh, fat looking cells which we'll see in more detail here. Here's the hyaline cartilage uh, here. We're going to zoom in in some more detail and the things we're going to pay attention to are chondrocytes in their lacunae which are the cells you can see in the spaces here and we'll look and see if we can see much evidence of a perichondrium or a dense irregular connective tissue membrane which will blend with the outer surface of the uh, cartilage. So as we increase in magnification now to look here at the cartilage itself one thing I want to emphasize is that many of the spaces we'll see here or the lacunae in which the cells uh, should be located will have what looks like a small amount of material which doesn't fully occupy the space and this is because the cells during the course of tissue fixation shrink back from the edges of the lacunae in which they uh, are found but in living hyaline cartilage the entirety of these spaces is filled by the cells that occupy them the cells in hyaline cartilage are frequently found in groups sometimes called cell nests or cell clusters here's a one such cluster here a grouping of them and an older term for that is isogenous uh, groups uh, the area immediately surrounding each cell lacuna frequently stains much more intensely in H and E stain and where it does this is collagen type 2 that has yet to adopt its fully mature uh, configuration and as a consequence it takes up stain much more avidly. Mature hyaline cartilage is the material we see here. It's a fairly homogeneous uh, pink mauve colored uh, material and you can see that the chondrocytes are embedded within uh, this material. If we move toward the outer edge of the cartilage we'll see along here some more pink connective tissue. So this is collagenous connective tissue. In fact it's dense irregular uh, connective tissue. Uh, this is the dense irregular connective tissue that forms the perichondrium or the layer of uh, connective tissue which abuts and is adjacent to the hyaline cartilage. And finally if we go to the other surface here we're looking now at the uh, epithelium. You know that respiratory epithelium is pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium with goblet cells. Here's a very good example of a goblet cell and a goblet cell and a goblet cell. Here are the cilia extending outward from the surface of the cells. These are long and motile. And here we can see why it is that the epithelium is referred to as pseudo uh, stratified because if we look at the nuclei, say for example this one here and this one here and this one here, and there are other nuclei down here, the appearance initially is of a stratified epithelium. But experimentally we can demonstrate that in fact none of these cells are stacked one on top of the other. All of these nuclei belong to cells whose bases are attached to the basement membrane along here somewhere. But it's just that the height of the cells vary. So some of the cells, for example this one, doesn't reach up to the lumen, whereas for example this one uh, actually does reach to the lumen. For the purposes of comparison, we're going to look at hyaline cartilage in another slide of trachea. It's one, that, again, that we have looked at before. If you type trachea into the search slides box and choose the third slide, this is one of these multi-tissue uh, slides, and you'll recollect from before that we've looked at small intestine, we've looked at tongue, and we also looked at this, which is trachea again. In this case, the trachea has been stained with periodic acid shif, a special stain which highlights uh, glycoproteins. So we're going to zoom in now just to look at the hyaline cartilage and make a comparison between the hyaline cartilage on this slide and the one we saw on the previous slide. And again, as we zoom up in magnification, 
here is the Highland cartilage here. The color of the Highland cartilage uh, looks different because of the different stain which is used. But again, between the uh, cells and their lacuna, you can see that the Highland cartilage is relatively homogeneous and smooth appearing. We have cells in lacunae. We can only see the nucleus. The rest of the cell has shrunken back. So this is a lacuna that would contain one cell. Some of the cells are found together in clusters, cell nests or groups, as we can see here. And then there's dense irregular connective tissue abutting this surface here, and that's going to be perichondrium. And a much thinner layer of dense irregular connective tissue abutting on this surface here, also perichondrium. The cells contained within the perichondrium here are, many of them will be stem cells, which could give rise to uh, chondrocytes and chondroblasts if necessary. And finally, again, here's respiratory epithelium, as we looked at it on one of the previous slides. And there's some loose connective tissue and some blood vessels in here. And you should use this opportunity to revise your knowledge of the appearance of respiratory epithelium, loose connective tissue, and blood vessels.